If you feel like you're being priced out of the Austin real estate market, you're not alone. Today, we're gonna to take a look at what's actually happening here in the ATX and what that means for your future plans of buying a home. What's happening everybody? Ian Grossman here, your realtor in Austin, Texas. Back at it here to educate you, to inform you, to give you insight on what's happening in this crazy Austin real estate market. So if you don't wanna miss out on any new developments here, as always, make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you're a subscriber and you're back for more, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. I hope that the information I give you is helpful and is putting you, uh, giving you a competitive advantage if you're looking for a home here in the Austin real estate market. As always, if you're new to um, Austin, you've never been here, check out my relocation guide. Um, the link is in the description. Would love to hear some feedback from you, whether you like it, whether it's lacking something, if there's something I need to add to it, always happy to do that. So this week, focusing on uh, whether or not you think you might be getting priced out of the Austin real estate market, because it seems like by the day, by the week, by the day, things are changing here and each week uh you know i kind of feel a glimmer of hope some light at the end of the tunnel thinking wow maybe there's some more listings that, that are on the market this week and over the last few weeks maybe there's been a slight uptick nothing too crazy yet um, i'm very interested interested to see the march uh, report from abor that will come out any day now and i'll talk about that in my next video um, also Random. This is probably the last video you're going to see this beard. My wife is not a fan of it, so I might have to uh, shave it off before the next video. So soak it all in. You know, when you live in Austin, you need a dog, a beard, or a tattoo. Don't have a dog anymore. No tattoo. This is all I got. So I guess I'm going to have to do one of the two. She doesn't like the beard. Going to have to go tattoo her dog coming up in the near future. Um, anyway, today I wanted to share. Um, a few real life examples, homes that have closed recently in some popular areas, so you can get an idea in the price point you're looking in, what's, you know, what's the range? What are homes actually selling for versus what they're listed for? Because what I'm finding is that a lot of the phone calls I get um, from buyers, they're saying, well, we're looking, we wanna stay under 300,000, or we wanna stay under 600,000. Well, you need to remember, the price you see on Zillow or Realtor.com, wherever you're looking, um, as just the list price is not gonna be the price that the home is selling for. And that is the case across the board in all price points right now. Another thing that I'm finding is I have these conversations and tell buyers what to expect, that you need to go basically 10 to 30%, in some cases higher, over asking price. And it doesn't sound that bad and it might not seem like it's true, but when you get out there and you start putting offers in and you get beat out by offers that are going that far over and then it starts to make sense, starts to sink in. Wow, if I wanna compete here, I better be willing to do what these other buyers are doing. So we're gonna start in um, a neighborhood, po very popular neighborhood, Southwest Austin called Circle C Ranch. Coincidentally, this is the neighborhood I live in. Why has it become so popular over the years and why this year has it gone to a new level? Well, you're talking about a 15 minute drive to downtown Austin. I mean, the fact that you can get a suburban neighborhood, pools, highly rated schools, and only be 15 minutes straight shot on Mopac on the highway to get downtown. I mean, really you get the best of both, both worlds. And I think so many people that um, you know were coming from hour long or hour and a half commutes see this as one of the best uh, options if they want that perfect blend. So let's check out this first house. It's a four bed, three bath. It's just under 3000 square feet and it has a pool. Um, the pool part of it is what really I think set it over the top, but this is a house that was pretty updated. It wasn't, there's was still some updated updates needed really in the bathroom. The kitchen was um, nicely updated, but the house was listed at 850. Um, and after a day on the market, the listing agent bumped the price up to 930,000 on the MLS just because of the interest that they were getting. Well, the final sold price on this house was 1.275 million, which is about 50% over asking. This one is the craziest. Out of the examples I'm gonna give you, 
50% over asking is next level. I was talking to an agent in my office that actually um, put a very similar offer in his client lost out. So we knew that it was going to land somewhere around between the 1.25 and 1.3 mark. That's where it landed 1.275. Absolutely insane homes in circle C, um, you know, built in the nineties, this one in particular, I think it was late nineties. It might've been early two thousands, but, um, this was not a million dollar house. Uh, a year ago or six months ago uh, at, at that. Here's another example, a five bed, four bath house, 4,400 square feet, also did have a pool. List price, 950,000. Final sale price, 1.25 million. This is around 32% over asking. So if, if you know, you're going out, this is the first home you're putting an offer on, you hear, oh, you know, 10, 20%. Nope, gotta go above 30 to get a house like this. And I'm gonna give you one more example in Circle C because this just, I kinda of wanna give you the full spectrum. Uh, it's not just happening for these large houses with pools. Here's one, uh, a four bed, two bath, just over 2,200 square feet. It was listed at 575, final sold price, 750,000. So when we're talking percentages, 30% over asking price. So now we're gonna take it up north to a neighborhood called Brushy Creek, I've talked about it in um, prior videos, very popular neighborhood right now. Why are people going to Brushy Creek? Highly rated schools, tons of trails. It's kind of centered around outdoors, um, beautiful oak trees throughout the neighborhood. Playgrounds, really, I feel like every corner you go to in the neighborhood, there's another park, playground. It just really is a good landing spot for someone who wants to be in Round Rock, but not go too far north up to maybe Cedar Park or Leander. All right, for these, I'm getting my notes out. I'm gonna go a little bit quicker than uh, for the ones I did for Circle C, but here's house number one in Brushy Creek, five bed, four bath, 3,600 square feet. It was listed at 789,900, sold $1,000,000. You gotta do that, I feel like I need to do that with Dr. Evil. $1,000,000, 27% over asking price, then one, four bed, two and a half bath. This one was 2,300 square feet. Listed at 425, sold at 550,500, 30% over asking. So, you know, if your budget's under 450 and you see this house pop up that checks all your boxes, but it's listed at 425, high likelihood, you're not going to be able to get that house. You need to be looking well below what your top, um, your max budget is. Next, I'm gonna take you out to Maynard, which is east of Austin. Um, pretty convenient to the new Tesla factory that's being built close to the 180, uh, sorry, the 130 toll road. So if you do work in Austin, um, it kind of, you know, you can take 290 uh, to the 130 toll road. You can take 290 all the way to I-35. A few different ways to get from Maynard into downtown or to go north south. So here's a home, three bed, two and a half bath, and overall the price point in Maynard is on the lower end, higher tax rate. You find tax rates around the 3% range in many parts of Maynard. But if you're looking under 350 right now, a lot of people are going that way. So here's a house, it was listed at 299. Final sold price, 390,000, 30% over asking. And while I'm sharing all of these, you might be thinking, well, you know, he's just cherry picking the, the ones that sold for the most. These are not the ones that sold for the highest over asking price. Um, and of course, there's gonna be certain homes for whatever reason that don't sell for that high, um, that maybe sell for just over asking price or 10, 20%. I just wanna give you an idea of what is happening out there. We, we are seeing it. And overall, yes, a lot of the houses are trending toward this 20 to 30% over asking price range. Um, the last one I wanted to share is in a popular neighborhood of Kyle called Hometown Kyle. Kyle is a suburb that's south of Austin. It's about 30 minute drive from downtown, maybe a little bit more depending on how far off the highway. But Hometown Kyle's just west of I-35, an area that has exploded and also an area that last year at this time, if you were looking for a house under 300,000, Kyle's a great option for you, not anymore. Here's one that was listed. Uh, it's a three bed, two bath. 1857 square feet, it's listed at 249. Final sold price, 316,000. So it's a 27% uh, over asking price is what they accepted. And all of the ones I've shared with you have been a mixture. In the MLS, it does say 
whether it's cash or finance, and they've all been uh, a mixture of the three. So you're really competing with everything, um, all types of financing out there, and you see that houses that are in all different price points in the low 200s up to million, uh, million plus really. I didn't even get to really homes that are, are listed over a million, but we're seeing the same thing where people are going far over asking price to secure those homes. All right, I wanna leave you with um, three realities that you gotta consider if you are diving into the, the Austin real estate market right now. I'm gonna get through these, uh, try to get through these quickly. Here's reality number one. The longer you wait, the more you will pay. Now, as inventory starts to uh, increase, as we see more homes coming on the market, maybe you, you're not gonna be competing with as many buyers, so you might not have to go as high over asking price um, as you would have in, in today's market. But what we're seeing is all these homes that are going over asking now, those are comps, those are, are comparable sales that new listings are gonna use as the months roll on. So when homes are going for 10%, 20% over asking price, then when the home down the street lists, they're using that as their comp. And then buyers are coming in and, and offering over that. So in three, four months from now, you're gonna be paying a significant amount more than you would have paid today. So take that in, into consideration. If you're waiting for really no reason, then you, you might wanna start the search now. Um, if you're waiting because you have to, whether you haven't moved here yet, or you have a lease, or whatever the case may be, um, just understand that demand, we don't see demand slowing down. If inventory picks up, great. You might be competing against three offers instead of 10 or 12 or 30, um, but you will be paying more the longer you wait. Reality number two, be prepared to do these things if you're buying a home in Austin that might not be normal uh, in the market or might not have been normal in the market a year ago or over the past several years. First one is you're paying for the owner's title policy. Typically, it's a seller's expense. Whenever we do uh, listings and we create a net sheet for the seller to show you know, what all their costs are gonna be, usually we include this, the owner's title policy in that because traditionally it's a seller's expense. In today's market, most buyers are offering to pay for that. Now, it's not an exact price. It goes, it's, it's uh, all calculated based on the sales price. And if you're ever curious, and this is something that I always do, if I have a buyer that's gonna be paying for it, do a sim simple Google search, uh, Texas title policy calculator, literally you type in the sales price and it will shoot out what the title policy cost will be. That's more money out of your pocket, out of your pocket in cash, um, but buyers are doing it to take the burden off the seller to make their offer more competitive. Another thing they're doing, they're offering to pay for a new survey if a new survey is needed. Now, sellers uh, on single family homes, sellers will sometimes have a survey. Survey shows the boundaries and any easements on the property. Well, if there is not a survey or if it comes back and the survey is not accepted by the, the lender or by the title company, someone has to buy a new one. Right now, buyers are taking on that expense. Usually they're around five, $450, $550. Survey companies are busy right now. They're bumping prices up. You might be looking at 600 to 800 bucks with a seven to 14 day turnaround time if you're ordering a new survey. One more thing that um, you can be expected to do, if a seller needs a lease back, which means they're living in the home, you close, and they stay in the house and essentially rent it back from you. It's called a seller lease back. It's very common, especially in today's market with how quickly things are moving. The seller might need more time to, to just pack up and get out of the house, or maybe they are closing on a home or they are having a home being built. And sometimes they will request, you know, a couple week lease back, or a couple month lease back. As a buyer, you need to be prepared if you're gonna offer a lease back to do it at the cost of zero dollars. Um, yes, you will start paying your mortgage and the seller will be living in the house essentially for free, but it's a way to make your offer more competitive. And if that means getting the home over um, you know, someone else who is, who's willing to do it or who wants to charge the seller, then you gotta pull the trigger and do that. Free lease backs are common. Um, in the grand scheme of things, it probably won't be that big of a financial burden, but 
Um, instead of collecting rent, do it for free. Final reality I wanna share with you is to understand you will likely be competing against cash. Whether it's straight cash offers or buyers who have very large down payments, you gotta go into the market now knowing that that's what you're competing against. One of the biggest reasons, we're seeing a lot of institutional investors, so big um, institutions that are coming with tons of cash. I have them calling me uh, on a weekly basis saying, we have money. If you know of a distressed property or something that wants to be sold off market, let us know, we'll pay cash for it. Also, new construction, I've discussed this in past videos, most builders are not selling to investors. That means if you want to invest in Austin, you're going to resale. And most of those investors, when they call me, are saying, if I can't buy new, I want something built in the last five years. They want less maintenance. So if you're a um, you know an owner occupant, buyer, primary residence buyer, you're out there looking for a house and you are thinking the same, I want a house that's only a few years old, just understand who you're competing against and what you might need to do in order to win those bids on a home. Um, there are lots of other factors um, in the market right now as far as what you gotta do to win, what you need to do to be prepared, to set expectations, and that's, again, what I'm here for. If you wanna learn more, I couldn't do all this in one short little video. Well, this one kinda took a little bit long because I had a lot to cover. But uh, if you wanna know more about the market or what you can do uh, to be competitive, please don't hesitate to reach out. Love having the conversations with you, and um, I'm happy to meet over Zoom, or I usually use Google Meet, if you're here in Austin, we can meet in person, strategize, figure out how to get you into a home. Um, that's all I got for you. Uh, again, if you have questions, don't hesitate to let me know. If this video is helpful, give it that thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We will catch you on the next one.